Have you ever been disappointed with an achievement? Maybe you feel you didn't deserve it or you could have done better. Maybe nobody recognized the hard work you put into something because you made it look too easy. Well, an unrealistic goal might be a solution to all of those issues. Today, we're going to talk about why you should quit being realistic and why you should set unrealistic goals for yourself. And you might be surprised that the goal of setting an unrealistic goal is not to achieve the goal. Oh Plot gosh. twist. It's like Inception in here. Is... Anyway, roll the intro. Welcome to the Let's Quit podcast. Quitting is not always a bad thing. If you have the right mindset, quitting can be the most powerful tool you have on your journey to success. It's certainly been helpful for us. Whether it's flying through hurricanes, building our businesses, or just trying to get to bed on time, we're always trying to level up and improve our lives. This is the show where we share the lessons, experiences, and friends that have helped us live this incredible life. So let's quit the bad and grow the good together. All right, welcome to the first episode of the Let's Quit podcast. Woo-hoo! Oh man, we're so happy you're here. We're so happy we're here. Um, yes. This podcast has been a long time coming. We've just we've had it on the back burner for so long. Um, super glad we could finally start to make it happen. Um, we've been planning and like writing it down and thinking about it, and then starting that whole cycle all over again. And we're just very happy that we are finally actually doing it. So anyway, we'd like to thank you, the listeners. Um, if you're a new listener to the show, which is all of you this time around. <laughs> so congratulations. Thank you so much to all of our new listeners. We're super happy you're here. We hope we can, um, I don't know, help you out on your commute or just, I don't know, just be a positive influence in your life this week. If for nothing else, you can just laugh, laugh at, at us. us. <laughs> That's where exactly where we're both going with that. Oh, great. Um, anyway, uh, if you enjoy the show, we would really appreciate a review on iTunes or whatever yes. your podcasting platform is. Uh, we also throw up a video version of this podcast on YouTube, on the if YouTube you want channel. To watch us talk at each other. Let's Quit Podcast <laughs> uh, YouTube channel is where you can find that. Um, anyway, uh, Thank you so much for being here. That's all we wanted to say. Um, Now we're making it weird. So, Jenny, (laughs) give us the quote for the episode. Every week, if you didn't know, every week we have a quote um, for the episode. It just kind of encompasses our, like, main topic. So why don't you give them to that? Give give that to them. Yes. So the quote for this episode is um, by Robertson Davies, and this is... One of my favorite quotes, um, it is the eye can only see what the mind is prepared to comprehend. It's just short, sweet, to the point, but there's so much to unpack. Nice. Yes. It's like middle school English class when you have to pick out all the symbolism. It's just so much good stuff. (laughs) Everybody quit listening now that you said English class. (laughs) I take it back. I take it all back. (laughs) I want to quit listening now that I said middle school English class. Oh, All right, so let's get into some story time. What have we been up to this week? We started a podcast. We did. We did start a podcast this week. So actually, that legitimately was a big thing that we were working on this week. Um, But if you're wondering why it's called Let's Quit Podcast, uh, which sounds kind of weird, because if you watch any of our content, any of our YouTube videos, read what we put on Instagram, that's kind of opposite to the message we send to quit we're like hey let's start your own business let's start building things in your garage start selling so it's probably kind of confusing they're like why are jenny and davis telling us to quit um but i think we've learned that quitting can actually be healthy it's a useful skill it is it's very useful skill i think where we learned this the most was when we were quitting our um, full-time jobs. So for those that don't know, Jenny and I graduated from college. We went right into the Air Force um, and we started our jobs there. And we had every intention of doing full military careers, 20 plus years, pay benefits, retirement, the whole lot. And um, it's kind of the the path that we were on and we were happy and excited about it. But um, we got thrown a few curveballs, I guess you could say. Oh, just a few. Uh, so Jen and I both graduated with weather degrees, meteorology, atmospheric physics, if you want to sound really fancy. Yes. Um, thermodynamics. And everybody quit listening once you said thermodynamics. <laughs> 
Anyway, so we graduated with these weather degrees. Um, we took scholarships from the Air Force, so they paid for those degrees. Which is um, fantastic. Very appreciative for that. Jenny got a weather job in the Air Force, which mm-hmm. is great. Um, I, however, did not. <laughs> right before graduation, the Air Force decided that all that money they spent on a weather degree, they didn't care about anymore. They wanted me to go sit in a bunker for 24 hours at a time, which ends up being like, you guys know an eight hour shift is never actually an eight hour shift. It turns into like 10 or 12. So you got your commute, you've got your preparing right. for the shift debrief. You know. So long story short, I was working nonstop 36 on 36 off hour shifts. And it was pretty grueling, not only because it was like tough shift work. It was, it was work that my brain was not wired to do. I was working with ICBMs. It was a lot of checklists, a lot of procedures, a lot of safety stuff. Um, Just just, following the rules, everything was very set in stone. You did not deviate. There's there's not room for problem solving. And that is like everything my brain is wired to do is about problem solving, coming up with new solutions, finding an efficient way to do things. And that corner of the Air Force just wasn't having it. As much as they say that they like innovation and everything, like that part of the Air Force has to be so rigid in structure because you're dealing with nuclear weapons. It's kind of a big freaking deal. Right. So it's not it's not I like get you it. were upset that it was rigid and structured. It right. needed to be. It was just maybe you didn't necessarily belong in that world. Right. Well, I mean, the Air Force decides where I belong. So like we kind of got over yeah. it because we signed up for it. We knew, like we, we, we did it happily, but we were stuck in North Dakota freezing our butts off. Um, Some of the, literally the coldest weather I've ever been in. Like anytime it snowed, it was a blizzard, just craziness. Yeah. So anyway, I'm not trying to sit here and like throw a pity party, but like we were in a career progression that we found out very quickly was not where we wanted to be. Mm-hmm. We look, I, we met a ton of people like from the top of the career fields, like all over from the air force and like nobody that we met that had been in for a significant amount of time, had the lifestyle we wanted, had the family life that we wanted, had achieved any of the goals that we wanted to achieve. And we just came face to face with the fact that like, we either need to change what we want for our lives or we need to find a better situation. And it was through the decision to leave our jobs that we learned how valuable of a skill learning how to quit something effectively is. Yes. And, and, and being okay with it too. And understanding that leaving something behind to accept something better is healthy to stop feeling guilty about the fact that you're leaving something because it might be really good to leave that thing. For us, it worked out that we got our dream jobs. As soon as we decided we were going to quit our full-time Air Force career jobs, like all of these opportunities opened up for us. Our dream job, which is in the Air Force Reserves, flying through hurricanes, which is what we do now, part time, that was our dream job. We never, like, we didn't even know how to get over there. We, like, it was just a dream. It was, it was abstract. It was way up in we the clouds. We figured it would probably never happen. Right. But all of a sudden, Jenny found some weird email that she wasn't supposed to get that was like, "Hey, this Hurricane Hunter unit's hiring." And so, like, we're sitting around the kitchen, like, just chilling or eating food or like, I don't know what we were doing, but like. Jenny was like, yeah, I got this email today. The, the, the unit's hiring. Like, I, should, I don't know. Should I respond? And I'm like, yeah. Resp- like, and we're like should we, what do we got we, to lose? Yeah. We're already leaving the Air Force. If this happens and works out, cool. If not, who cares? And sure enough, we came down, we interviewed, we got the jobs. But like in that transition, we had already accepted that we were going to quit. We quit listening to all the conventional wisdom from the people around us, we quit who, lis- by the way, didn't have the lifestyle that we wanted. That's exactly what I was just going to say. We quit listening to people who didn't have um, anything of, of value to provide for us in like that part of life that we were in. Right. We quit listening to financial advice from people that were worth less than $5 million, because that's where we nailed down. Like That's that was not, nobody was financially where we wanted to be in the military. So, uh, like, we quit taking advice from people that were worth, had a net worth of lower than $5 million. Yeah, and I think another important thing we quit doing was um, 
l- telling ourselves that things weren't possible. Like we said, oh, it's impossible. These are our dream jobs. We'll never find them. We'll never know who to contact. And we're like, we've got to stop that because clearly that is possible. That's no longer an excuse. We've got to stop telling ourselves, you know, that it, it'll never happen. Right. Especially with our dream jobs. Like we had built up in our heads that like this was impossible. We weren't qualified. We were way too young. It was too early. Yep. Like we had all these stupid like limiting beliefs that were going to keep us from contacting the unit to see if we were even hireable. I mean, that was the first thing you did was you called the hiring with our boss now and you called her and you were like, hey, are we wasting your time if we apply? And she goes, what? No, you're not wasting your time. Come on down. Interview. Like we had so many limiting, limiting beliefs that anyway. And we were like, we're we getting... have got to quit that. Like, right. Just got to cut it out. Because I do feel like today there are so many things that people want you to add to your life. Add these five amazing habits to your morning routine and you will become ultimately successful. And then you read something else and it's like, add these 10 things to your life. No, you have to add this mindset to your life. And that's all well and good to add positive things to your life and to your mindset. But there's only so much you can add. Yeah, something, something's got to go. And to make room for those good things, like the bad things, just there's not room for them anymore. You got to kick them to the curb so you can make room for other good things to come through. Right. And this is not like one size fits all information. Like some people don't do enough. So it's yeah. we're not trying to say that like you should never add anything. But the life lesson that we have learned for the both of us is that quitting can be an effective tool. It is not taboo to quit something, even though for some reason our culture thinks that quitting cannot be done appropriately. Mm -hmm. And so we just kind of want to buck against that and just we're here to say we're here to give you permission. If you're not getting something valuable out of a negative situation, just quit. I mean, yes, growth mindset, try to build, try to grow from it, try to, you know, don't, don't, don't skirt away from pain just for Mm -hmm. the sake of wanting to have a comfortable life. But like we did in North Dakota, if you've squeezed every bit of growth out of a situation and you're still left with a, a pretty bleak looking future, get to a better spot, guys. You're too valuable. You have too much potential to waste it just floating through life passively. And that's what we want to encourage you to do. So that's why we called it Let's Quit is because we want to give you the the power and the tools um, like other people gave us in order to pare down what isn't working for you so that you can double down on what is working for you. Yes, I think that's the biggest thing is doubling down on what does work for you and getting rid of the things that straight up don't. So that was a really long, really heavy explanation for a two word (laughs) podcast title. (laughs) Yes. Anyway, on a lighter note, uh, what else have we done this week, Jenny? (laughs) So besides uh, starting our podcast, um, we ended up building about 50 cutting boards this week. I think it was uh, technically 46. I think that was the number we came to. But yeah. So for those that don't know, we have a woodworking business. Um, furniture business. Samara Table Company is the the business that we run. Right now we're just selling cutting boards and eventually we're going to move into coffee tables, desks, kitchen tables, like larger tables, which is why it's called Samara Table Company. Yes. Um, yes. Anyway, we are in the very early stages of that business. Uh, We were building quite a bit of furniture when we were stationed in North Dakota, but now we're in Houston and we're just trying to... It's much warmer. (laughs) Yeah. Well... Other than that, but like we're trying to scale a business. This is not this is not a, just a mom and pop shop operation. Right. We don't Nothing want to against bring... those, but we want to scale and grow. Yeah. We want to like we really want to hire employees. We really want to provide for other families. We want to give good job opportunities for people that need them um, in the skilled trades. And yeah, so that's kind of that's that's why we're growing this business and we're scaling it. Yeah. Yes. But what we were working on this week uh, for our business was cutting boards because that's one of our main products that we want to sell. And so we knew we needed some inventory stacked up in our shop because we didn't want to get orders in and then say, all right, cool. Thanks for your order. Now wait two weeks and you'll get your product. So we started building and then we started asking ourselves a question. We're like, what is the maximum output of our little two car garage shop? Like yeah, what, what are like, the most cutting boards we could do? Because one day we want to move to a commercial space, but that's expensive. We know we're going to have to have a certain amount of profit coming in before we can afford that. And we genuinely do need to outgrow our smaller two-car garage shop before we do that. But we're like, what is that number? Right. So we'll spare you the math. But we did all the math, and it came out yes. to we need to be able to produce 100 cutting boards in one week. Not, not saying, Yeah, not saying that we're going to do that every week, but we need to be able to do it in a week should we need to. Right. That would like if we hit that benchmark, that would show us that we have the ability to uh, 
sustain paying commercial rent and paying employees yes, and stuff like that. Yeah, that's like, like that. our tipping point, our So once our demand, right, once our demand gets up to the point where we need to build 100 cutting boards a week, that's when we would flex into the commercial space. So we were just trying to see, like, what does it look like for our little two-car garage to produce 100 cutting boards in a week? Well, we can't do 100 cutting boards in a week. Because, because we're only dedicating three days a week to working on our business in general. Right. So we said, all right, what's the most we could do in three days? Well, if we're, if we're, you know, let's just half it. Let's cut it in half. We're, we're only working three out of seven days. Let's cut it in half. See, can we make 50 cutting boards in three days? Mm -hmm. Well, we got kind of slowed down. So we only worked on them for two days. Well, we ended up making 25 Full ready to boards. go. boards. Like ready I could to go. throw them in a box and ship them tomorrow. Right. And then we have 21 that are just an afternoon away from being all completely finished. Right. Um, so 50 boards in three days, two and a half days. Anyway, 50 boards in two and a half days is basically what we did this week. Um, we are super, super happy with that number. Right. Because that's the pace that we'd have to keep if we wanted to do 100 a week and we already see ways that we can optimize it and get faster and get yes. better and like we were slowed down this week with trying to write a procedure figure out how to do it mm -hmm. like we'd do it much much faster now um if we had to do it again tomorrow so right and that kind of gets into our topic for this episode is why did we choose like why were we okay with doing a 100 boards in a week because it sounds kind of outrageous um we very well could have just said uh oh, realistically i think we could honestly do like 10 boards in two days that's what i'm comfortable with and then we would have never known that hey you can do 25 in two days and, and 50 in three days um and so like why why setting unrealistic goals is important um, and to us it's because you never know what'll happen you don't know what you're capable of and why limit yourself when you don't know the possible outcome like when we pursued our dream job like we didn't take it off the table like it was it was a big huge unrealistic goal for us mm -hmm. but then we found out just how realistic it actually was so we did copying the same format we said hey let's try to actually do the impossible of making 100 cutting boards in one week. We don't have the demand for that. We've never done it before, but hey, let's give it a shot. And then we were able to find out, hey, it's really not that difficult. So yeah. anyway, um, but on more on the topic of like the reason, one of the reasons that we say to set unrealistic goals is because what Jenny said, you don't know what could happen. And I was first exposed to this lesson uh, when I was stationed in California for my first year of training. So I had a couple buddies. One of them uh, was a photographer. His dad was a photographer growing up. He just got into the hobby. So and we went to college together. So I knew him. And then I had another friend that did videography. He worked for um, University of North Carolina's football team and stuff like that, making all their promo videos and stuff like that. So he did video. My other buddy did photography. And then I started learning how to code websites in the morning before class. And what we would do is every weekend, we would drive down to LA or Santa Barbara, and we would try to I don't know, like book photo shoots or like get these music artists. Like w w basically we're just going, to, going down there as a three man team trying to do multimedia work um, for anybody that would pay us or anybody that would give us a cool experience. So one of the things that I'm just kicking myself for, I was the guy that was like complaining about everything. I was the guy that was like, why are we doing this? What is this going to lead to? What, we're not taking any money for this yeah. job. Why, and, What's the point? <laughs> and my buddy Will, like, God bless him. But like, <laughs> he he dealt with my stubborn like mindset so well. He just said, hey man, like, what if it goes right? Serial optimist. Yeah, just one of the awesome guys. He's got a YouTube channel. So check him out. His name's Will Collette. He's one of those guys that just nothing ever stops him or slows him down. He never has a reason for why something should stop him or slow him down. Right, because his reason is, what if it works? Mm -hmm. One of his one of his like life mottos. He wrote it in his book. Was like, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? What if everything that you tried or set a goal for, you succeeded in? What would you do differently? And that's that's how this guy lives life. That's not something he puts on a t-shirt. I think he does put on a t-shirt. But like, 
It's not something that he like has on his wall or like, you know, personal affirmation. This is how this guy lives his life. And anyway, I'll just sum it up in a really quick story. Maybe not a quick story. It's a podcast. Is anything ever quick with us? This is like the third not quick story we've told. Anyway, we went to go film Eric Thomas. Um, Really cool motivational speaker guy. If you've never listened to him, Um, really great guy, really great story. Will knew him from when he was uh, speaking at UNC and wanted to film him when he came to LA. So he worked his magic, got us in, and we were just going to help film uh, this event that he was putting on at this hotel in LA. So we show up. Um, I'm just operating a camera, not doing anything crazy. And all of a sudden, my buddy just like disappears. My buddy Will. And we have no idea where he is. And so I'm hanging out with my other buddy. Uh, we're taking pictures, just kind of talking to people and everything. And then uh, my buddy Will comes back. He's like, all right, guys, we're going to film a fashion show. And I'm like, we're going to do what? So the whole plan, my buddy Will had told me, like, we're going to film exotic cars. This like, There's people with like really cool cars that come to these events. So we're going to meet all these people that have cool cars. And we're going to film music videos. And we're going to do all sorts of cool stuff with cars. And I'm thinking, what is this dude coming to me with wanting to shoot a fashion show? Like what? And he's like, yeah, no, I talked to this girl. Like she knows a fashion designer and like, uh, it, it'll be cool. Don't worry about it. And then I hear from another guy is like, oh, he just talked to the girl that takes like wristbands at the door. Like not actually the fashion designer. So I'm like, I am pooping on this thing really hard. <laughs> like I am not believing in it. Well, uh, I, I don't even go to the meeting to this fashion person, whoever it is. I, I just don't want to go. I'm chilling in the car. I'm not feeling good that day. So I just take a nap in the car while the other two guys go into this Starbucks and meet this girl. So they walk out. They are white as ghosts, both of them. And it, I'm like, guys, what's up? And they're like, don't worry. Don't worry. We're just getting our computer. We'll be back in a minute. So I go back to sleep. Well, then they come out and they're still just like their jaws are on the floor. And I'm like, what happened? And they're like, this girl is a fashion designer. But her fiance is the music producer for Snoop Dogg, Kendrick Lamar, all of these hip hop guys and like rappers. And that that's who we met. And I, the night before, was saying it's stupid. We shouldn't meet with them. We shouldn't pursue this opportunity. Like I was being the guy that was like the wet blanket on the whole deal. And anyway, Here you are meeting famous people. Long story long. We filmed a fashion show on the rooftop of an L.A. skyscraper. We got to go into Justin Bieber's recording studio in Santa Barbara, the same place Katy Perry recorded an album. Like just we got so many amazing opportunities that started just because uh, we talked to this fashion designer. And uh, anyway, so that's where I learned the lesson of like you just never know what's going to happen. So you can't limit your beliefs with a small goal. Right. And I, th- I feel like setting that smaller goal, yes, it's way more comfortable and you feel better about it. You're like, oh, well, if I set this goal and I like don't meet it, at least I won't be crushed. But by setting that smaller goal, you're saying no to anything bigger. And it's like, what's worse, saying no to something bigger that's like going to get you further or saying yes to being comfortable and potentially, you know, not having your spirits crushed, which your spirits shouldn't be crushed anyways, because you shouldn't wrap your identity up in it. But um, kind of like w- what we did with these cutting boards this week. If we would have set a goal for 50 per week instead of 100 per week, we would have just said, oh, cool. We, we would have hit the goal probably and been like, oh, well, it looks like we can only do 50 a week. Well, you know, whatever. I guess it's just going to take a little bit longer to get into a commercial space. That's fine. We'll work up to it. And like Laura only knows how much longer we would have waited to start thinking about a commercial space. Right. And like... <laughs> It's kind of a tough balance. Like you just have to like shoot as high as you possibly can and then put the work in to try to meet it. We're not saying set lofty goals and then just be okay with wherever it falls. Right. You actually have to pursue the hard goal. And then at the end of it, when you fail and you see that you met 80% of it, well, you still made it 80% of the way to an unrealistic goal. Yes. So you got to like understand the, the little brain game you're playing with yourself there. But um, yeah, if you, if you set a smaller goal, you're saying no to anything bigger. Right. And do you really want to be saying no to a bigger goal than what you're setting? And if the answer is no, then you should set a bigger goal. Right. And so 
you think to yourself like, oh, that answer must always be no. Of course, I don't want to settle for a smaller goal. Of course, I always want to set bigger goals. But there, I guess there might be a point where sometimes a small goal is helpful. We're not saying it's always the answer, but helpful. Oh, there definitely is to like help you get moving. Like right. sometimes you just need to put one foot in front of the other. Your goal can't be to run a marathon. Your goal is just to go buy a pair of running shoes. Like you have to yeah. break it into smaller steps, but I'm saying like your overall goal needs to be huge. Um, there's a time to lower the bar for yourself just to get moving. But uh, I guess that's what we're saying. It's a balance. It's, it's mm-hmm. hard to do. It, and it's a hard balance to strike. If you listen to the people that have succeeded in life, these giant alphas of industry and like mm-hmm. business and, and family and like anybody that's accomplished anything significant is going to tell you, you have to set a huge goal and then you also have to focus on just your tasks for today. Right. You've got to be like, able to handle that contradiction or that I, apparent contradiction. And I feel like just as human beings, like more times than not, we're going to want to stay comfortable and limit ourselves rather than setting like this huge, massive goal. I feel like that's just kind of how our brains are wired. We're like, you know, you want to run away from fear and you want to run away from failure and feeling like you didn't meet that goal and people judging you for not meeting that goal. Um, so naturally you just set smaller ones, but it's always good to run toward the fear and the uncomfortableness and set the larger goal. And this is kind of what we teased at the beginning of the thing, like achieving the goal is not the goal. Achieving the goal is uh, great. If you achieve it, great. If you made a hundred cutting boards in one week, good for you, pat on the back. But like what you learn through that process is way more valuable. The discipline, the the work ethic, the growth mindset, all of those things are going to give you the power and influence that you're looking for to accomplish the next goal. Again, don't beat yourself up because you didn't hit the magical goal that you set out for yourself. If you, if you come 90% of the way to a huge goal, that's going to give you way more than 100% of a smaller goal. Right. And with our cutting boards, like, do we absolutely need 100 cutting boards right now? No, <laughs> we don't. We need a few to sell to people, yes, but we didn't need like 100 sitting in our shop. What we needed was to prove to ourselves that we could work that hard and produce that much out of our little shop. That's what we needed. We needed to tell our brain, no, shut up, you're being stupid. We are capable of this. Um, and I feel like we never would have proven, proven that to ourselves if we started with a smaller number. Right. And going forward, we will never decline a job because we don't think that we could handle it in our small little shop. Mm -hmm. And that, that is going to be way more valuable to us than even a hundred cutting boards would be is just knowing that we don't have to decline jobs because we think we can't handle it. We've done the pace of a hundred cutting boards in one week. We've, we've handled large amounts of demand before, but when we didn't have the demand. uh, So Anyway, that's just kind of what we're getting at with that. So we've talked a lot of theory. And one of the things that we want to do with this podcast is we want to give you takeaways. We want to give you action steps you can take to put these things into practice. Because we understand the way Jenny and I are wired, we give way too much theory and not right. enough and examples. Practical. And you're left with like, how exactly do I do that? Right. So here is... Um, the the practice that we go through, we've taken this from a lot of other places. It's not something that we've come up with on our own. Yeah, we are not smart enough to develop this on our own. The, the first one comes from a uh, four-hour workweek guy, Timothy Ferris. Um, he, he talks about dream casting, and this is kind of our flavor of it. So step one is you outline your perfect future five years from now. Close mm-hmm. your eyes, sit in a, in a quiet place, and think, what do you want to be doing day to day in life Five years from and now. And be like drastically honest with yourself. If too. everything goes well, if, if you achieve every goal that you set, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Yep. What what would you be doing every single day if you met every goal from here five years from now? It doesn't mean you get to skip the work. It doesn't mean you get to like, this is not a genie with three wishes. It's like if you do in reality all the things that you want to do in five years, what will you be doing? If best case scenario... And write it down. Right. Like, don't just leave it in your head because you'll forget. Right. I'll <laughs> we, get to that in a minute. We tell ourselves that all the time. I'll but. get to that in a minute. But yeah, like y- write everything down and then I want you to double it. If it's if it's amount of money, I want you to double it. If it's a three-star restaurant, I want it to be a five-star restaurant. A six-star restaurant. I'm just a kidding. A six-star. <laughs> eat at a six-star restaurant. <laughs> if like whatever, whatever goodness there is five years from now, if you're optimistic about it, double it. And then... 
you need to ask yourself one question every day. So once you've got all this written out and it's all nicely outlined, every single day, I want you to look at it and I want you to ask yourself, what one thing can I do today that will get me closer to that goal? What yes. can I do today? What can I do today? Do, do I need to go to do I need to go to the gym? Do I need to work out? Do I need to research something? Do I need to share something with someone? Do I need to sell something? Do I need to start a website? Do I need to get my resume in order? Like what do I need to do today? What's one easy thing I can do today that will get me closer to that eventual future? Cuz you def- you always have to work backwards. In this in this scenario you never want to work like from the starting point forward because I feel like that's a recipe for limiting yourself. You want to start with your big goals and say, hey, what do I need to do in the next year to get that done? What do I need to do in the next six months, two months, one week, today? And it's going to start to sound frustrating when what you're doing on that one day seems so trivial. And you're like, what does this even have to do with this big goal? Um, But keeping yourself on track is going to keep you from being a month out and then looking back and saying like, oh, I'm so behind. Why am I not where I want to be in this last six months? It's like, well, you didn't, you know, take your daily little steps that actually do add up. And, And doubling it helps keep you from limiting yourself. Yes. It allows you to accept a reality that's much better than what you originally cast the vision for when your brain was really limited. You just got to do the math and know that like right now your brain is, is limited in what it can see in the future. Uh, Bill Gates has another quote. He's like, people overestimate what they can do in a year, but they underestimate what they can do in 10 years. Yes, that is exactly the quote I was just about to bring so up. So you're, allow- you're allowing yourself to double all the happiness you could have or double the, the standard for yourself five years in the future um, with your limited mindset right now. So yes. anyway, we're getting into theory again. It doesn't really matter. You <laughs> said we wouldn't do that, and here we are. Anyway, long story long again. Um, but basically, we say write them down um, and say them. We want you to say them out loud every day, which sounds ridiculous maybe to some people. But there's research on this. Like, I don't remember the study. I should probably have it. It's gonna be, <laughs> It'll be in the show notes. Uh, if a goal is written down and spoken out loud, it's like way more likely to be accomplished, like overwhelmingly more likely to be accomplished if it's written down and it's spoken out loud. Because now you're bringing it into reality and you're on the hook for what you've said. Because setting a goal is a risk. It's like, mm-hmm. it's like Babe Ruth calling his own home run. When you, when you tell somebody publicly what your goal is, you're trying to call your own home run and right. everybody hates you for it. Yes. You're going to get judged. This is the point at which people are going to start to think you're crazy. Crazy. They're going to think you're prideful. Um, maybe you're just a confused person, uh, but but they don't know you and they're not in your head and, and they don't know your potential. And those are the kinds of people that I'll bet you they're not thinking about what they want their ideal life to look like in five years and then doubling it and writing it down and backtracking all their steps to exactly what they which can do is today. Why, which is why they get so hostile is because they like you try to improve your life. They're not. They get defensive. And that's what that's what fuels the anger. Um, Mm -hmm. anyway, but that's a whole other podcast. Anyway, (laughs) just set a goal. It's, it's a risk, but it's a risk worth taking because you have so much more potential than you realize. You don't want to leave anything on the table when, you know, life is over. Like you don't want to have any regrets. So anyway, that's, uh, that's our show for this week. Um, I hope it was good. I hope it wasn't too scatterbrained for you. (laughs) Got Um, pretty deep right away. We went from building 50 cutting boards to all of a sudden, like, in your chili, in your in your life, chili. <laughs> um, do we have any announcements? I don't think we have any announcements. We have a podcast. Announcement. <laughs> announcement number one. Um, and then next week, uh, we'll kind of tease next week's topic. It's going to be... Quit skipping steps. Ooh, like what? On the stairs? Yeah, like quit tripping up the stairs. No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you so much for joining us. We'd love a review. Wherever you get your podcast from, we'd love a review. Yes. Um, that would really help the show out a lot. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback too. So you can send us an email at letsquitpodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear your thoughts, opinions, smart remarks, jokes, all of the above. Thank you very much. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye.